My name is Sam Meisler, and I'm a small animal veterinarian. In this segment, let's talk about dog cancer. Now, dogs get cancer just like people do, and they respond to it in many of the same ways, and they also respond to it in different ways. If your dog has a diagnosis of cancer, the first thing you want to know is what type of cancer. Many cancers in dogs are treatable with chemotherapy, or radiation, surgery, or other types of therapies. One of the most treatable cancers in dogs is dog lymphoma. There's a very good treatment regimen which can extend your dog's life, sometimes months up to years. And if you look at a dog with lymphoma that's had its life extended, and I mean good quality of life extended, a full year, in human years that's like extending its life a good seven to ten years. When you have a diagnosis of dog cancer, you want to weigh all your options. Dogs tend to handle chemotherapy very well. They do not have the psychological aspects that people have dealing with chemotherapy and dealing with uh, thinking about cancer and about the end of your life and that sort of thing. Dogs do not have that psychological aspect, so they seem to handle it psychologically very well. They don't lose their hair. If they have reactions to drugs, we can change them somewhat. And if they do have a tough time with chemotherapy, then we have to weigh whether it's even worth it. And that brings us up to the po a very important point, is why do we want to treat your dog's cancer? Are we treating it to extend its life for you, or are we treating it to extend its life for the dog? And sometimes it's a combination. And these are very important questions, and there are no right answers. If your dog will handle the chemotherapy very well and finance is not an issue, then it may be worth, worth treating. The key is to explore all those opportunities, put aside any preconceived notions that you have of chemotherapy, or of cancer treatment and go to a referral center. Sometimes your own veterinarian will have some uh, chemotherapeutic options available even at the general practitioner's office. But explore all the options first, go with an open mind, see what the financial aspect of treatment is, see what the uh, aspect of treatment side effects are going to be for your dog and then make a, make a balanced decision. A lot of times your dog is going to handle things a lot better. Now some of the questions you're going to ask your oncologist is what are the side effects of these drugs? What are the percentages as far as survival? Oncologists like to talk in terms of mean survival time, mean uh, number of months, the average number of months that a dog will live after treatment with this type of cancer and those are all questions you, you want to you want to ask you want to ask yourself whether your dog has the temperament to be treated if your dog is very skittish fearful aggressive then it's going to be very traumatic to go in for weekly visits or monthly visits to a veterinarian to have blood drawn and to have uh, IVs placed or to be sedated for uh, radiation that sort of thing so those are all factors that you want to consider when treating uh, for dog cancer. But there are a lot of new cancer therapies out there. A lot of dogs have very good survival times with some of these cancers and it really is worth at least exploring your options.